This is God's Church of Love Online, reading Revelation 3, chapter 7 through 12. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. Let me repeat that. For thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is a new Jeru which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. When I read that last night, oh my goodness, the thing that, that pierced me to my core was where he said in verse 8, For thou hast a little strength. Oh my goodness. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. Some of you see yourself as having a little strength. When, I'm trying not to get emotional. Okay. When we see ourselves as having a little strength, we oftentimes see ourselves in the spirit realm as grasshoppers while everybody else seemingly towers over us. We oftentimes see ourselves as one with very few gifts and very few abilities and with, with very little connection with God. We see ourselves with very little strength. Some of us see ourselves through the eyes of our personal insecurities, personal self-doubt. We wonder why doesn't God do this with me? Does God notice me? Am I important in his list of things? Do I count in his plan? Why don't I experience this? Why don't I have that? Why didn't God give me the other? Why do I feel so short changed? That's the word that just came to my mind. Short changed in the things of God. Help me, Lord. Let me put this in the everyday sense to help you understand how things work. You can have a gigantic cruise ship and the cruise ship looks monumental. Or you can have a clock, a big grandfather clock. And the mechanism that keeps everything timed so that everything is on schedule and does exactly what it's supposed to do, can be very small. 
like in James, it talks about how a big ship is controlled by a very small elm. Without that elm, that ship would go topsy-turvy. You don't know where it would end up. Listen, you guys. It's not the size or the amount. In the world, they say size matters. Not in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, purpose matters. And what God has purposed for you is what will designate where your strengths and weaknesses lie. A lot of times your strengths and your weaknesses are totally connected to the purpose and the callings and giftings for which God has put you here to operate in. Now, let me share a, a quick example of one. Let's go personally. One of my biggest weaknesses is the lack of organization. All right. One of my husband's biggest strengths was organization and, and methodology. Not me. For me, he, he, was, he was methodical and everything. For me, I'm haphazard. I'm spontaneous. I'm, oh, yeah, okay, let's do this. Oh, we can switch over. I'm very flexible. I mean, it, it, not a big deal with me. Now, here's the shortcoming that comes with that gift. I can flow in the Holy Spirit. That's a strength. But there are a lot of things that I fall short in because of the lack of organization. Part of the lack of organization, what I found out, comes with a strength. It's associated with a gift. People who are creative, that's why you don't curse your weaknesses. Just understand them and work on them. But don't condemn yourself in the areas where you feel weak. When I, anything I do, whether it's design, clothing, uh, furniture, houses, artwork, uh, anything that even music and poetry or whatever, whatever I put my hands to that functions in my creative juices, when my creative juices get to flowing, I can come up with ideas that come straight from God that nobody else can come up with. It doesn't mean that I'm better than them. It means that in that area, that is my strength. But with that strength comes a pile of weaknesses. Now, what I found out through the psychological uh, venue is creative people tend to be, um, I just said it, what's the word? <laughs> creative people tend to be um, haphazard. They're not... Uh, Okay, let's put it like this. Let's change the subject because I'm losing my train of thought. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. You look at a big ship. For those of you who feel like you have very little, you look at a big ship. An anchor can only do one thing. The anchor can only be tossed aside into the water. It drags the bottom. It hangs on and it stops the ship from drifting all over the place, correct? It keeps it stationary. But listen, that's all that anchor can do. It can't do anything else. But it is of monumental importance for that ship. Do you understand what I'm saying? God wants you to appreciate what you're able to do. He wants you to understand why maybe you're not, a, you're not able to do some things. It's not an oversight with God. It's all about purpose. A steering wheel in a car, I'm trying to get you to see this. This is not a hooping message. I want you to see this because I feel like God wants to minister to some of your core questions that you don't really address, but they're there morning, noon, and night. 
and those questions don't seem to be getting answered. When you look at an automobile, the car can be ever so beautiful. A steering wheel in a Volkswagen has the same purpose as a steering wheel in a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. The steering wheel cannot run the car. The steering wheel can only go right and left. It can't get out the car. It can't take a jog in the morning. It can't have a cup of coffee in the afternoon. It can't talk. The only thing a steering wheel can do is be moved to the left or to the right. That's it. Basic. But the car will never get anywhere. You will never get anywhere if there is no steering wheel in that car. The whole car, the engine, the transmission, the mechanisms, everything in it, the wheels, everything is useless without a steering wheel. Some of you have some of the most weighty gifts in the body of Christ. And you've been doubting yourself because you're listening to what other people are saying and what other people experience and what other people are able to do. And you're wondering, well, what about me? What am I, a chopped liver? God knows those questions are in your heart. That's why he had me bring this weird message. There are some of you, because of your gifts, I'm getting this right now, because of your gifts, you're constantly under attack. Because of the purpose for which you were put on this earth, you're constantly under attack. You're disrespected. You're played. You're being treated as if you committed a crime and all you tried to be is your best. It's all connected to the gifts and callings on your life and the mark of God on your spirit. Whether you're doing with or doing without, whether you're being attacked from within or from without, whether you feel like you're lacking here, or you're lacking there. I've always suffered with smallness. I understand where that comes from and how disheartening it can be. But once we grasp and understand how important each and every gift, each and every calling, each and every election, each and every purpose, once we understand how important and pertinent it is, it will stop us from being disheartened and from feeling small, from feeling like grasshoppers in our own sight. God does not have significant members and insignificant members. When we sit and play with our fingers, what do we do? We decorate certain fingers of our hand with rings. We put bracelets on our wrist. Only recently have people thought to put anything on a thumb. The thumb is the most comely, as the Bible would call it, comely, ordinary, plain, unattractive, the least attractive thing on the whole hand. Yet. If you try to do anything with four fingers and leave your thumb out of the picture, there's a whole lot your hand will not be able to do without your thumb. There's a whole lot the body of Christ would not be able to do without you using your gifts. It, this is not a long message. 
Don't think of yourself as having little strength, little to offer. Don't think of yourself as little and insignificant. Well, this is hurting my heart. Somebody is really tripping out there. I don't know who you are. Do not think of yourself that way. That's not the way God sees you. That's not the way God created you. He didn't have little in mind when he created you. He had greatness. And even when he describes in James how a ship is moved about by a very small helm, the smallness is in conjunction with something else that happens to be physically bigger. But smallness has nothing to do with significance. What happens, thank you, Lord, when you see yourself, when you see your giftings, when you see everything about you is small, you end up with the mindset that the spies, the 10 spies had that went out to spy out the land, right? Two spies, Joshua and Caleb, came back saying, we're more than able to go in and take on the land. The others said, no, we, they look like giants and we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And what ended up happening? A 13 day victory that should have been 13 days took 40 years. Do everything in your power to constantly ask God to give you his perspective on your giftings, on your callings, on your abilities, and on you as an individual, how you value yourself. If everybody devalues you, you better value yourself because God values you. Never place your self-esteem based on what everybody else says about you, how everybody else treats you, what they do and what they don't do. Don't you dare size yourself up by everyone else because they don't count. Only one counts and that's God. And if God deemed you important enough to call you into his kingdom, you better hold your head up, baby. And you constantly say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm going to tell you all things. Lynn, you could be president of the United States. Rashad, you could be president of the United States. Lynette, you could be president of the United States. Peter, you could be president of the United States. Davina, you could be president of the United States. Baby sis, you could be president of the United States. I could be, pre any one of us could be. Don't you sit there and think that you, there are only certain limits to the blessings God has for you because you're one of the insignificant ones. That's a lie from the pit. I don't care if they don't like you and if they think you're sedity and if they think you're conceited and if they think you're not worthy of their respect and if they think you don't have anything to offer and if they don't listen to you when you talk and if they ignore you, whatever you got to say, because they're not interested, it does not mean that you are not important in God's heart. Don't you ever buy into the way people treat you. We are a very small group, but I'm going to tell you right now, y'all, every single one of y'all are giants. Every single one of y'all are weapons of mass destruction for the enemy. There's not one small person, not one insignificant person in our group, not one. I don't care where your failures are. What did God say? Woo! Help me, Father. Woo! 
for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word. None of us keep his word perfectly, but we're striving to keep his word. What else did he say? And has not denied my name. Every single one of us is proud to say we belong to Jesus Christ. That right there gets God's attention all the time. Mm. Ooh, somebody is struggling. I don't know who you are, but I am feeling it in my spirit. Ooh, I want you to repeat after me, even though my mic is off, but I want you to say it for your sake in your room, wherever you are. I can do all things through Christ. Say it. Which strengthens me. It's not you that strengthens you. It's not your abilities that give you strength. Our strength comes from God. It comes from Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. Oh, I don't know who this is for. Oh, help me, Lord. Some of you will be like a little match, and you think, look at me, I'm, no I'm nothing. I'm just a little match. But when you strike that match, and you stand in a dry, barren land that's just full of dry weeds, tumbleweeds, and and dry brush, you drop that match and what do you end up with? A humongous brush fire. I gotta go to James. James three normally is dealing with the tongue, but it has so many points that describes this and I wanna go to it real quick. Okay. Verse four, James chapter three, verse four. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, wherever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Listen, don't use your tongue against you. Don't even go there. You, everybody else, if they want to use their tongue against you, they're free to do so. But that has nothing to do with you. What you look at is all that God can do. He can take, oh, this song is coming to my mind. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took a wretch, a wretch like me and showed me his love and concern. And by his grace, he made my life a new and better one. I owe him my all. Mm, I cannot let him down because he's the one who made something beautiful out of my life. Whether you're a rosebud, whether you're a match, whether you're a little mechanism that does only one thing in a big old grandfather clock, no matter what you are or what you're not, you are great in God's eyes. Ooh, Father, I pray. I pray you work a healing. I pray, Lord, you encourage and let these, your people know how great you see them. Lord, the way a parent gets all excited and exuberant when their baby makes one step, 
The baby ain't going nowhere. He's not going to the store shopping, bringing groceries, but he makes that first step. And it's, come on, you guys, he's walking, she's walking. And the celebration that takes place by one little moment of progress. And Father, I'm asking you to help each and every one of us understand how you celebrate when we are just making simple steps of progress in our lives. Help us, Father, never to give up on ourselves, never to give up on you, never to give up on life, never to toss away our, our callings and giftings. Help us, Father, never to get weary and well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Help us, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Some of you will have to read the word about yourself to remind you of how important you are to God. You have to read certain scriptures dealing with how God places so much importance on you. You have to read the, about the disciples and some of God's servants to see how they blew it, just like you're blowing it. But God used them because what the one thing they never blew was their relationship with God. What did Peter do? Peter denied Christ three times. God already knew it was going to happen, so what did Jesus do? He told them, before the cock crows, you will have denied me thrice. Three times. What happened? Exactly as he said. Peter went back to fishing. He was so discouraged, he just ran off. And when Jesus came and said, and the angel instructed them to gather the disciples to meet Jesus, what did he say? And Peter. He specifically mentioned Peter because even though Peter had given up on himself, God did not. He understood disheartening and discouragement when we fail, when we don't handle things because life closes in on us. God understands. He understood all of that before you were born, baby. God bless you. Pray, seek, cry, confess, whatever you got to do. But you hang in there, baby. Because you see yourself as failing and failing, or you see yourself as coming up with the short end of the stick. God sees you as trying and trying. He sees you triumphing. He sees you as, as something great, something wonderfully. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. No more grasshopper mentality. Kick that baby to the curb because you ain't no grasshopper, not one of you. In the name of Jesus, no matter what they say, no matter how they treat you, no matter who likes you, no matter who doesn't like you, no matter who treats you with spite, no matter who ignores you, no matter how they, no matter what you're able to do or what you're not able to do. Don't you size yourself up by that stuff. You size yourself up by the loving heart of God, period. End of story. That's an order. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is for you. And I want you to be for yourself. Amen.